just doing this quick little mini tutorial of painting some holly or mistletoe uh, with some red berries. So I've got my super simple image drawn out. I haven't put much detail on it. I literally just have the outlines. And I'm going to do all these leaves as a wet into wet. And I'm going to do one half of the leaf at a time because there's some different light effects and highlights and things like that going on on the different parts. So I have my leaf fully wet and this is probably the simplest one of the bunch because it does not have too many highlights on it. It's a little more shadowed than the other. So I'm just going in with some hookers green with some sap green. right on over just letting it all mix right in that water on the paper and then as I get closer into this area that's a little more shadowed I have some of my shadow green that I'm just adding right in there and again I'm letting this all just mix right into the wet paint on the paper and again, this isn't going to be a super high detailed painting. It's just going to be something super simple. Might be cr perfect um, if you're making some custom Christmas cards, things like that for people. Um, just with a really simple painted image on it, um, this would be the perfect kind of thing for that. So just getting those greens in there, letting them all mix right on the page. And now before I do the other half of the leaf, I have to let that one dry. So then I'll just move on to this next area. So this one has a little bit more of a highlight along the leaf. So when I'm adding my green, I'm going to be a little more careful to preserve some of the white areas. So again, I'm just doing this as a really simple wet into wet wash. I have ready on my palette my three greens, my hooker's green, sap green, and shadow green, just mixed with water, ready to go on my palette. I don't have any combinations of them mixed together, just on the palette. And I'm just doing all the mixing straight on the page. And just letting that water flow right into each other. Now, Hooker's Green is a very bright, bright, brilliant green. So you have to be careful how much Hooker's Green you're using because it does get very fluorescent and bright. So when you're using that, you just want to make sure where you're using it that you're not overdoing it. I'm just adding some more of the shadow color into this little area where it's a little bit darker. Making sure not to get too dark on my areas that have some highlight. So just letting all those greens mix right in there. Right on my page. So it gives it that nice, nice effect. And then I'm going to lift out some highlights in the end. So I'm not as worried. I know that these colors lift pretty easy. So some of the areas I'm going to leave a little bit whiter. So while the paint is still wet, I'll just go in and lift out just a little bit. But most of my highlights, I'm going to lift the end out while it's dry. Going into adding my color on my third leaf, I've already wet it, and I'm just adding my color right in. Now this one has a little bit more highlight on it, so I am going to leave parts of this one a little bit lighter so that I don't have to lift quite as much at the end. So I'm just coming in here adding some of my dark color where it's a little bit darker and shaded across the bottoms of the leaves. But then there's quite a bit of highlight on this one. 
so I'm not going too crazy with my color to make sure I'm leaving some of that highlight so I don't have to lift quite as much at the end. And again, this one has quite a bit of highlight in it. So I'm leaving most of those highlight areas. white and just letting that water pull the paint in where it needs to. So just leaving that white. I'm doing the rest of the leaves the same as a wet into wet wash, just adding my three different greens and leaving my highlight as white as possible. Now that the leaves are in, I'm going to come back and do the berries. So I have some Scarlet Lake. I've already wet the paper and I'm going in with my Scarlet Lake. Now again, I'm making sure to avoid my highlight areas when I'm putting this in. I do know that Scarlet Lake lifts pretty easy, but still if you can avoid the highlight areas and never put color down there in the first place, you know, that's always ideal. So I just have the red going in all over my berry. Now you want to make sure that you're making this look like a three-dimensional object. So when the red's going in, you want it to be look like a sphere. So now I have some perylene maroon that's going in around this side. So I know where my light is coming from. And I've got the perylene going around the bottom and edge to really make it look like the, the light is coming from that side and blending in. I'm going to put oh, get a little bit more red up here at the top next to that highlight. And then I have a little bit of perylene maroon mixed with neutral tint that I'm just going to add right at this base area to really increase it looking round and that shadowed look. And again, this is all as wet into wet into that initial wash. So I have all my paint mixed up on my palette before I start painting. That way I'm not spending time mixing things while my paint is currently drying on my paper. Okay. So I have that first berry in. I'm going to go ahead once that dries and do the other berries the same exact way. Doing the same wet into wet wash with the same three colors on the other two berries. Now that my main parts of my leaf are in and dry, I'm going to put a shadow in. Now I want my shadow to be a really subtle, blurred shadow. So what I'm going to do is with totally clean water and a clean brush, and again it's key that you have totally clean water for this, um, I'm just going to wet the paper around the bottom of the image where I want that shadow to go. Okay, so I'm just wetting much larger of an area than my shadow is actually going to be so that when I add it in, it will have a naturally blurred edge. And as long as I'm using completely clean water, I don't have to worry about it leaving a mark on my paper. So I just have the bottom of this paper wet right up to my image. And I have some cobalt blue mixed with some neutral tint. And I'm just going to go in and put a little bit, a hint of a shadow under this. I'm putting it in super light just to kind of show that it's there, it's sitting on the ground. Okay, I'm, do I'm not letting it get too dark. I really just want to give the hint that these things are touching the ground and there is light coming from a direction and it kind of just makes it feel like they're not floating. Okay, so it's just a super 
light wash of color on that already wet paper to give it the hint of that shadow. And because the paper is wet, I'm just getting that nice blurred edge that I want to just kind of ground those objects and make them feel like they are touching the ground. It's just a little darker right under where those berries actually touch. Just to give you that feeling that they are touching the ground. And that's it. And because the water was wet, it just dissipates down and adds that little bit of detail to it. You could totally call this done, and that would be fine, and it looks great. However, now I'm going to take a lifting brush, which is just a slightly firmer bristled brush. Not very firm, but just a little bit. And I'm going to go through, and I'm just going to touch up some areas, lift out this area in the center. And again, I'm just going in with a damp brush, Blending some of those hard edges. And then you want to make sure you're blotting with your paper towel. And then I'm just going to go back in and lift a few areas to take out a few highlights. Now, this is what's going to end up making this really pop, is these highlights that you're pulling out at the end. So again, you can easily finish this and call it done, but it's these last finishing touches on a painting that really make it work, that really make it come alive and give it that realistic feel. Just adding in some of those areas. Now this leaf has a couple veins in it, so just super subtle. We're going to just lift the tiny bit with this brush. So just a damp brush and I'm just going through and just giving you the feeling that there's a couple of those little veins running through the leaf. And again, my brush is barely wet. I'm just going through and lifting out just the tiniest bit to give you that feeling of them going through. I'm not adding a ton of detail with them just a few here and there to give that leaf that look that they're coming through. And I can do it over on this side as well, just a tiny bit, because it's not as dark. Okay, and then I'm gonna come over to this leaf, and again, I'm just gonna blend some of those edges where those highlights were, where it just dried a little bit of a hard edge. But just coming in with that damp brush and lifting out to really make that leaf look like it shines. And at this point, I'm going off a photo, but I'm really kind of just looking at it and thinking, okay, if the light's hitting it this way, you know, where would that come down to really make it most effective? And then I'm just going from there. Just going through and lifting out some of those other areas, doing a tiny bit of dry brush with green just to give it a little bit of texture, and that's about all it needs. And then just a few little finishing touches of adding the little marks on the berries, and I'm going to call that done. Thanks so much for joining me to paint some holly or mistletoe, whatever you'd like to call it, with watercolor. Just a super simple, quick little painting showing you how to do some leaves and highlights and berries. Thanks for joining me.